So recently I was watching the 1976 King Kong movie, and while I did not watch the whole movie, what I did watch was pretty awful. But watching this movie did get my mind working and thinking about ways that the King Kong franchise could work as a franchise and not just a series of more or less standalone movies. One thing that I didn't realize was that one, King Kong actually hasn't had that many movies. Three of his movies have been the same story, just remade over the years, and two of them were made by Toho Studios, who makes the Godzilla movies, and beyond that, there was one sequel, and that was about it. There wasn't really that much in the way of a King Kong franchise. The thing to keep in mind when thinking of King Kong as a franchise is that King Kong has something in common with the Highlander, in that both of these franchises originally were not meant to be franchises. If you watch the original King Kong movie, spoiler alert, but King Kong dies at the end, in the same way that the Highlander ends with all of the immortals dead and the last immortal no longer being immortal. It would seem that these two movies would be the last movies that you would expect to have a sequel, and yet the Highlander has had five sequels and a TV series that ran several years, and King Kong, some 70 years later, has had four or five sequels and or remakes. So yeah, these movies, even though they don't really work as the beginnings of franchises, they kind of are. So like I said, watching the 1976 movie got me to thinking of ways that King Kong could work as a series of movies. And the first thing that I thought of was, in keeping with the tradition of remaking the first story, a way that the first story could work without the characters in the story being complete useless idiots. One thing I really, really hated about the 1933 story and the 76 story and the 2005 story is that the human beings have to bring King Kong to New York City in order for the story to happen. And I get that they wanted this super iconic image of a very old kind of creature superimposed on the New World cityscape. I get that. It's really more about visuals than it is about story. Because if it was about story, then we would not have a character, even a sort of scumbag movie director kind of character that we have in these movies, we would not have a character bringing King Kong to the city to do his movie. So when I was thinking of ways that King Kong as a story could work without bringing King Kong to the city, I was thinking, why not just do a King Kong movie set entirely on the island where King Kong is from? In the 1976 movie, we see that King Kong fights a gigantic snake, and I assume there are other monsters on this island besides just King Kong. So if you were going to do a movie set entirely on the island, you would have plenty of opportunities for danger that our human beings would have to face if they're going to do whatever it is that they're going to do on the island. As far as their purpose for being on the island, maybe there's an archaeological dig or something along those lines on the island, and they are not going to leave until they find what they're looking for. You can still have a human being who's kind of a scumbag and says, I don't care what the rumors say, even if there is a gigantic gorilla on this island, we're not leaving until we find X, Y, and Z. And, in the same way that the original King Kong story and the remakes of that story have had a female lead who kind of has this emotional bond with King Kong, maybe the lead archaeologist or lead scientist can be a woman. There's no reason that a woman can't be a scientist in this day and age, right? Alternatively, in a post-Godzilla 2014 world, maybe you could have the humans on the island specifically because of the monsters on the island. In the 2014 Godzilla movie, we find out that Godzilla was not actually created by radiation, but was trying to be destroyed by radiation and that he existed beforehand. This was a fairly interesting idea, I thought, although I know there are a lot of people who really did not care for this twist on the original story. So maybe you could have sort of a Dharma Initiative type group on the island because of the monsters that are on the island. Maybe they are trying to capture one of the monsters and study them. Maybe even at first they capture King Kong, but then they realize that King Kong is part of this larger system on the island, and when they remove King Kong, all of the other monsters become more hostile because the natural predator has been removed from the system. And then perhaps our lead character has to release King Kong so that he can save them all from giant snakes or something like that. Again, this is just if you wanted to remake the original story without having one of the characters be exceedingly stupid just so that the plot can happen. I feel like this plot would work fairly well, and I think it would be a very interesting movie. But I'm not really sure if people would want to see another King Kong origin story. Even when you change the original story considerably by not having any of it be set in the city, you would still sort of be getting the same story with King Kong and the humans meeting each other for the first time. 
So if you did not want to go that route, if you wanted to actually use past King Kong stories as sort of a backdrop to a new story, kind of like how the 2014 Godzilla movie has done, there's a way that you could do that as well. As I mentioned earlier, King Kong is a series that doesn't really work as a series because the main character dies in the first installment, at least in the 1933 movie and the 1976 movie and the 2005 movie. The way that the 1976 movie deals with this in its sequel 10 years later, King Kong Lives, is that they say that King Kong didn't really die when he fell from the Twin Towers, which, eh, that kind of stretches credibility a little bit, and I'm talking about a movie where a giant gorilla is going around New York City targeting one woman specifically. Yeah, it stretches credibility in that kind of movie. One way that you could make this work is to say that King Kong actually did die in the original movie, and then say that however many years later you want to set this next movie, all of the nations of the world have perhaps gotten their hands on King Kong DNA and are trying to recreate King Kong in a laboratory. Now this might take things a little too far in the sci-fi direction, but in my opinion when you have a gigantic ape who's crawling around New York City, you've already pretty much crossed that line, so it's okay to take things even further. Now one way that you could really make this story work well is to set it in the Cold War, when nobody really trusts anyone and they're all trying to get their own super weapon that will neutralize everyone else. In the real world history, that was the nuclear bomb, which eventually everyone had a nuclear bomb, so that kind of made anyone having one nuclear bomb kind of pointless. So in this story, maybe instead of the nuclear bomb, everyone is trying to have their own version of King Kong, who maybe they can try and train, and if need be, they can send King Kong into enemy territory to try and just kill anything and everything that moves. Maybe that would be the impetuous for trying to create a new King Kong. Now this was an idea that Brian Michael Bendis used quite a bit in his Ultimate Spider-Man run, specifically in the Ultimate Six miniseries, where every nation is kind of trying to create their own superhuman so that they can have their own weapon against everyone else. And honestly, this is a pretty good idea. I think it would be very interesting to see this play out with King Kong as sort of the weapon and everyone else kind of being the victim if one of the King Kong creatures escapes. Now I'm not really sure how you could end this movie, since one thing I was saying to my dad when I was watching the 1976 King Kong movie, the reason that they kill King Kong in each of the original stories, the 1933 movie, the 1976 movie, and the 2005 movie, is that, well, there's not really any other way that you can end this story. Once you bring a gigantic ape into the city, you can't just have him escape into the forest and then have a happy ending like you did in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. This is a gigantic 200 foot tall gorilla. There's not really any other way that you can end the story other than having everyone kill him. And so if you're going to do a genetically created, genetically enhanced King Kong creature who is not the original Kong, and then he escapes from the laboratory and hilarity ensues, well, again, you're going to have the same problem that the original movie had in that there's not really any way that you can end this other than that creature dying, and then you're back at square one with how to turn this into a viable franchise instead of just a series of standalone movies. That's really about all I have to say here. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of ideas for how you could do a new King Kong franchise. I just had one or two ideas that I thought were very interesting, and I thought I'd share them with you guys. What do you guys think? I personally am not a gigantic King Kong fan. I've seen a couple of the movies, and I more or less liked what I've seen, but I'm sure there are those of you out there who are much bigger King Kong fans than I am. Tell me what you guys think of my ideas in the comments below, and if you like this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with another kind of video. Until then, I will see you guys later. Have a great day.